Are you enjoying the expansion of your own desire? And are you believing in the full manifestation of those ideas of desire? That's where it's at, isn't it? Because when you desire something and you believe it, then you are in that sweet spot where the universe can continue to surprise and delight you in the unfolding of that ever-changing, always-evolving desire. But if you are disappointed that it hasn't come yet, then you're not in that sweet spot. You're in that disappointed spot. And when you are in that disappointed spot, then it slows it way down. And the disappointed spot can be a long, 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 long spot. In other words, the universe can continue to disappoint you if you're in the disappointed spot. So the key is to figure out how to not be disappointed when it hasn't happened to you yet, when it hasn't come into full-blown manifestation yet. Because it has come into being. There is a vibrational version of your desire that is alive and well and gathering cooperative components. And you can tap into that, even though you can't yet see it or hear it or smell it or taste it or touch it, you can tap in to the actuality, to the reality of this vibrational version. And when you do, then disappointment cannot be upon you because you are actually sensing this unfolding. It's like this anticipation of more to be seen and heard and so forth. You never get it done, so there will always be something more that you have sifted from life that you now want that is in the process of becoming. And we want you to enjoy all of the phases of the unfolding of this. It's like if you were to plant some corn, for example, as you prepare the soil, that's part of the process. And as you put the corn into the ground, that's part of the process too. And you're wise enough to understand that process because you don't stomp on the ground and demand that it comes out today and then feel all disappointed when it doesn't because you understand that there is a process and that you know that it will germinate in that soil. You know that it will become more. And a lot will happen before you are able to see any of it. And then for quite a while, even though you can see it, you see it in its beginning, not in its fullness. And if you are a wise farmer, you understand that all is well in this unfolding process. And we want you to understand that you are the creator of your own reality and that a lot of your seeds are in the ground. But if you're stomping on them, disappointed that you're not seeing them yet, you're slowing the whole process down. We want you to leave here today with a greater understanding of what it feels like to be in that happy, anticipatory state of being where you are trusting the process and even more, you are believing in your own worthiness. You are expecting good things to happen to you because sometimes you look out into the world in a sort of comparative fashion and you don't know how long ago somebody planted their corn. You don't know how long they even wanted corn. You don't know how ready their soil was when they planted it. You don't know about their corn. You only know about yours. But as you compare your newly planted seed with someone else's long ago planted seed, sometimes then you come away from it feeling unworthy or incapable when you are not. You have so much more in this now potential for getting your energy straight in order to begin a faster process toward the things that you want than you realize. And sometimes what happens to you, because you've not really understood the laws of the universe, and you've not really understood your place in the universe, and you have not really understood your relationship with your inner being and with all that is and with the energy that creates worlds. So you have been responding to conditions and thinking thoughts all over the place about wanted and unwanted. You've been thinking about what you want in the absence of it, and you've been noticing what is for quite a long time in many cases. 
And so, because you have not deliberately and knowingly been focusing yourself within your understanding of the laws of the universe, you've been wanting and then noticing the lack and wanting and then noticing the lack, and you haven't allowed any momentum to go. And so, sometimes what you've been wanting, you've been wanting it for a long enough time that now your habit of thought around it is that it's not happening and your emotion around it is disappointed rather than eager and anticipating. And so we want you to understand that you can't measure from where you stand right now how long anything is going to take by how long it's been taking. Because that was then and this is now. And because then you didn't know what you were knowing now. In other words, don't compare how long something will be. One day a man sat in the hot seat and he was really sad because he had experienced a dramatic and drastic financial downturn. And in his words, Abraham, I've lost everything. And I'm in my 60s, he explained, and I just don't see how I will ever in this lifetime recover or even come close to recovering. And we said, you are misunderstanding a really fundamental thing. You cannot measure where you are in relationship to whatever it is that you're wanting by the manifestation that you have in your life experience right now. That is irrelevant. Didn't feel irrelevant to him because he had a lot of assets a few days ago and now he didn't have any of those same assets. His balance sheet looked very different and because of his balance sheet looking different, he felt very different. And we said, you got to understand that you've been amassing vibrational momentum and that your point of attraction today after understanding all of that is very different than it was all those years ago when you were just beginning. The universe is responding to your vibrational projection, to your vibrational offering. And you can stand here and let this circumstance that has happened to you, you can let it be the reason that you think the thoughts you think and therefore project the vibration that you project and therefore accomplish the point of attraction that you can accomplish. And you're right. It won't be in this lifetime that anything begins to turn around for you. Or you can stand in the vibration that you have accumulated. You can be and experience the momentum that you've been gathering and it can turn around fast. And he could hardly believe what he was hearing from us because he couldn't get his thoughts around the idea that something that had taken him so much of his life to accomplish could now be accomplished in a very short period of time because it isn't about time, it's about alignment. It is not about time. It's not about anything other than what you are doing with your vibrational alignment. It is simply what you are doing with your beliefs in relationship to your desires. When you desire something that you believe, there's no time between the vibrational accomplishment of it. But when you want something and you doubt it, there's as much time as you continue to doubt it. Sometimes people will say, well, how long will it take me to get from where I am to where I want to be? And we say, as long as it takes you to stop doubting and start believing. And they say, well, how long will that take? <laughs> as long as it takes you to stop doubting and start believing. Well, well how long does that take? Well, it takes as long as it takes for you to stop doubting and start believing. Well, how long does that take? And we say, it's really a variable. But it has to do with how conditioned you are at focusing on what is and how willing you are to focus upon the vibrational what is. As humans, most of you, we love you so much, but you give most of your attention to things that are occurring. In other words, you are reacting mostly to the circumstances around you. So most of your vibration is in reaction to what is. So if you're looking at something that pleases you, your reaction is one that is beneficial to you. But if you're looking at something that doesn't please you, then your vibrational reaction is something that is not beneficial to you. And you got to cut that out. You've got to stop just looking around, looking around, looking around by default, and then reacting to what you see and expecting any consistency in your vibration. You have to figure out how to be consistent in your vibration. You have to decide and you have to practice and you have to become good at, a master at, offering a vibration that feels good even when the condition hasn't changed. You have to stop letting your vibration be about what is. You have to begin to find a way to let your emotions travel down the path 
of how you want to feel. So how do you do that? How do you do that after you've been reacting to life so long? Your kids are so sweet this morning, and you just love them so much. So easy to love them. They were sleeping long. <laughs> the sweet little faces when they're asleep. And then they wake up. <laughs> and they start fighting with each other right away. And you can hear the drama and the trauma all around the house. And you put your head down on your desk, and you think, kill me now. <laughs> And now you feel different than you did about them when they were asleep. And that's not cool. Because you got to figure out how to be consistent without asking the conditions around you to change. Because you can't control the conditions around you. You know that if you've got kids. You cannot control the conditions around you. And the harder you try to control the conditions, the more you give up your life for something that never gets you anywhere. In other words, there's a way easier way to go about it. You can find a way to feel the way you want to feel regardless of the conditions. And that's what unconditional love is. That's what unconditional alignment is. That's what unconditional clarity is. That's what living in the sweet spot is. That's what practicing the art of allowing is. That's what being in the sweet spot and watching what feels to others like the magic of the universe swarming around you and providing for you this perfect ride. So it sounds to you a little bit like we are eager for you to have manifestation of the things you want. We hear you say to us, Abraham, all right, I'll accept your version of the vortex. I can't see it or hear it or smell it or taste it or touch it, but I believe you, sort of. <laughs> I'll accept that it's there, but just tell me, how can I get my money out of the vortex and into the bank? <laughs> how do I turn those vibrations into thoughts and those thoughts into things? And we say, this is how. You find the feeling place of what you want. If you're wanting an extra two or three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine hundred thousand dollars and you want it like right away, it's not likely that it's going to land in your bank account by the end of this gathering. But by the end of this gathering, you can have accomplished a feeling of prosperity. And if you can accomplish a feeling of prosperity by looking at the abundance that is evident in your life, both the financial abundance and the lifestyle abundance, and the ease abundance, and the clarity abundance, and the friendship abundance, and the magnificent planet abundance. In other words, there is so much abundance that you could focus upon, or you could just stop, and this is the thing that we want you to understand, what unconditional love and unconditional clarity and unconditional alignment, what they are all about, is much simpler than trying to find conditions that line up. Because for every condition that you want, there's a condition that you don't want. And then you get in this sifting and sorting with conditions and you kind of get lost, especially in the beginning if your vibration isn't really clear. But you could close your eyes and you could focus on your breathing. Or you could count slowly. Or you could listen to a ticking of a clock. Or watch the flicker of a flame. Or listen for the squeal in the condenser of the air conditioner. You could focus upon something that required a little bit of concentration, not a lot. And as you focus upon something that requires a little bit of concentration, you will release resistant thought and your vibration will rise. And as your vibration rises, you will be in the vibrational frequency of your inner being. You will be in what we are calling the receptive mode. And if you would do that every day, if you would just sit for 15 or 20 minutes and just quiet your mind, it might take 13 minutes to quiet your mind. The earlier in the day you sit to do it, the better because you don't have so many things already moving through your mind. But if you would sit to do it, Esther sat this morning and within a minute or so, she was right up there. She could feel that high-flying place. And for just a moment she thought, this is the place of no thought. This is the place of no thought. And she just sat in that satisfying feeling that satisfying feeling of no thought that was taking her away from who she really is. The satisfying feeling, a satisfying feeling of liquid love and absolute clarity and absolute and utter well-being. That feeling of connection to who you really are. And of course, we don't want you to meditate all day. We don't want you to even meditate more than 20 minutes. If you knew how much you wanted to be in these bodies, you wouldn't be trying to get out of them all the time. You want to be in these physical bodies and you want to be experiencing the clarity of this time-space reality.